Hello there folks, Fuzzy Pixels here, and today we're taking a little bit of a look at the new Will Arnett comedy, dramedy, tragic comedy, tragic comedy, dramedy thing called Flaked on Netflix. It's an eight episode series, um, and he's teamed up with uh, the writer from uh, the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret, in which he also starred alongside David Cross, as well as Mitch Hurwitz, the creator of Arrested Development, is executive producing on this. And obviously, they worked together on another little series called Running Wild, um, in which Will Arnett played a sort of privileged, very rich guy who never really gave anything back, and then sort of fell in love with this woman who sort of taught him to sort of do that. Um, and Peter Sarafinowitz was in it. It was pretty cool. Didn't review very well, but I. I got a bit of a kick out of it. So yeah, Flaked. Flaked is where we're at. And I guess sort of Will Arnett went to Netflix and said, hey, I'm teaming up with Mitch Hurwitz again and here's a script. Go! And Netflix went, we've got all the money. So yes. And I, as a viewer, went, hey, it's one of my favourite actors. So obviously. It's easy to look at Flaked as something of a character piece. So Will Arnett's character Chip arrived in Venice 10 years ago as a result of this accident whereby he got loaded, got behind the wheel of a car, ran him and down and killed him and it's pretty that's pretty dark that's pretty dark and you can kind of get an idea of like the tone of the series I think it's important to sort of manage your expectations like going into this and thinking okay it's a Will Arnett vehicle it's going to be ridiculously goofy fun it's going to be Job and Chip does share a few things with Job but you take most of the comedy out like take most of the slapstick most of the Michael most of that ridiculousness um away from the character of Job, because Job was kind of a bit of a tragic character in his own right. We see that, you know, when he's trying to sort of self-asphyxiate while having a bit of a, you know, uh, in the Blue Company offices. But but Job was always very much a, a comedic character, you know. It's, it's the ensemble comedy of Arrested Development. This is very much kind of our net show, and it's it's a lot darker. Um, so Chip, yeah, he's, he's arrived in Venice. It's a show all about the community um, saving, saving little Venice, which... So it has become increasingly more gentrified. It used to be a shithole. Now it's now it's like sort of up and coming, and people are wanting to invest and build new stuff. But will that damage the community? That's that's one of sort of the core pillars of the show. But it's also about Chip's personal development as well. His relationship with his ex-wife, uh, who's played by Heather Graham, and isn't in it nearly enough. And and also kind of how he exists within the community so he's heading up all these AA meetings he's become a sort of pillar of the community always there sort of dishing out advice um, and failing to take it himself it would seem but it's all kind of shown to be a little bit of a front like in trying to help people more often than not it's usually for self-serving reasons and that's kind of where that sort of self-centered nature of some of Arnett's other characters and previous characters and previous shows kind of comes to the fore he's very good at playing that role a guy who seems incredibly sort of extroverted and outgoing and charming while secretly being a bit of a douche nozzle and Chip is most definitely a massive clown of douche see the first few episodes take this gentle, gentle character piece um, and, then, and then the sort of plot elements start coming in a lot more and to be honest I think we could have done with that a little bit earlier so Chip's a really really nicely crafty character and Arnett imbues him with some some really really great depth there are a couple of like key points later on in the season where you know it's just devastating in some scenes but he's weakened slightly by the fact that if he's up here all of the supporting characters are down here well actually like Dennis might be here his best mate and then the, the female supporting characters kind of get a really short shrift in this so we've already mentioned his ex-wife Tilly played by Heather Graham and there are some things that come in later on in the season that would hit so much harder if, you know, they'd explored that relationship a little bit more. Let's take Californication uh, as an example. In Californication, they really, really examine the relationship between Hank and Karen. Like, Karen is a massive part of that series, as is Becca, his daughter. Like, like you have these these female characters who, who really, really are characters with their own rights. They're not just there to sort of bounce Hank off of, like, they're fundamental parts of the show. And I think the same can be said for Marcy as well. She is absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately, in Flate, kind of London, who's the the, the quirky, uh, kind of mysterious waitress that sort of Chip starts to fall for, um, is, is, is more of a mirror than anything else. She's a cipher character. She doesn't really have a huge amount of depth. And even though she has, like, a pretty significant plot point as part of her story, that's not really explored like her loneliness in Venice isn't ever really explored she's a character that hints at depth right she's a character that hints at depth but we never really get there as part of those eight episodes and in fact like Flakes almost seems to run out of steam because 
out of those eight episodes, it reaches a really nice finale at the end of episode seven. I mean, if I was reading into this, I might look at it and say, you know, the superficial nature of the other characters reflects Chip's own kind of emotional investment in them. That's something I'd say if maybe I was really, really, really trying to root for this show and trying to analyze it like that. But I don't think really think it's just that. I think it's just they just haven't been developed enough. I'm not sure that's purposeful. And if it is, it's it's unsatisfying and therefore bad. Um and I just kind of wish, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd kind of brought these characters more to the fore and imbued them with a little bit more depth. You know, the, it's there. It's hinted at. It's probably written there in the background, but we just don't really see it come to the fore. And those, those key exchanges kind of fall by the wayside. And at the end of the day, the, the, the plot points that should really matter come off a little bit flat and a little bit like, ah, I could see that coming sort of thing. Or, ah, don't really care. And it's a shame, really, because it is really watchable and it is an easy ride and... Arnett is, he's, he's, he's quite likable even when he's being a dick. Um, you just wish there was a little bit more substance in it. There's a wonderful cameo from Christopher Mintz Plass who really trades on kind of the darker side of the characters he's sort of been pigeonholed into, you know, that sort of like really, really quite nerdy, Fogel-esque character who's lusting after women. But now he's, he's actually something of a tech mogul. You know, he's one of those young 20 somethings who's made their money in Silicon Valley and wants to invest in Venice. And you see the darker side of say, yeah, what if, what if Fogel got rich two years after Superbad? That's, that's what we might see. At the end, I found myself thinking, what does this show want to be? Does it want to be a serious kind of deconstruction of, of Chip's character? Because it doesn't, it never really goes deep enough for that. It's not something like Mad Men, where you have a similar character who's got this troubled, shadowy, mysterious past where, you know, and a, and a, and a web of intrigue and lies like separating 10 years ago from the present. And, you know, you're, you're exploring all of that through multiple seasons. It doesn't really do that. Neither does it do the Californication thing of having this incredibly tortured soul who does some seriously fucked up shit, um, but is treated almost like a cartoon character, uh, yet still manages to have those those fairly in-depth discussions about, you know, family and love and life and all that sort of stuff in Venice. Um, so it never really swings either way. It, it occupies this strange no-man's land as flaked, and it it just never quite flourishes into the thing that, that you hope it would be. That being said, if you've got a soft spot for on it, I'd, I'd, definitely, I'd definitely give it a watch. Um, just don't expect it to be the best thing he's going to do in the next in the next 24 months or so. That's going to be Lego Batman. Oh yeah. <laughs>